Huge progress at Giga iOS. Yes, there is a ton of stuff to cover out in Nevada. It is not clickbait. There is actually a hive of activity, a swarm of workers. It is going pretty crazy. And if I want to talk about crazy, who better to talk about it with than Mark, a real crazy expert, uh, if you will. And I suspect you will, because I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, 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 oh. What are we doing, man? What a week it's been. Busy week. Busy. Busy. I would love to go see Giga iOS at some point. I would settle for Giga Nevada. I may be able to make that happen in coming months. Fingers crossed. Hey, we should uh we should look at some stuff. We should look at the fine products of Zangler, the Tesla semi advocate. He's a whole advocate, but uh but for the semi. So looking at this right here, um, do you notice anything new or different in this picture yet? Well, we do have some boxes that have moved around, uh, uh-huh. but um, bunch of boxes, that, bunch of cars. You got yeah. it. The, Let's head uh, over here. The, it's it. It appears that there's there's more cars. Okay, it does. Now, a lot of these cars are for the LFP factory down the street, which Tesla also owns. Right. But as we're looking around, that's a lot of cars. That's a lot of cars. Um, As we move up the building, still a lot of cars. And now we've got some movement over here. Ah, at the charging spot. Yes, sir. The chargers are getting... Uh, some love. They're getting some work done. What's in these? Uh, well, these are porta potties, but what's in them? I we don't want to know what's in those ones. <laughs> we have a pretty good idea based on the food trucks. So uh, the cabinets look like they've been unwrapped out here. That's pretty good. Yes, and it looks like they're they're arranging possible of those those units onto the concrete pads. Yes, and it looks like they're tearing up this uh, pavement right here. Yeah, what would a Gigafactory be? What would any Tesla factory be without without ripping up done equi- <laughs> asphalt in concrete? Berlin had remarkably little of that. Look at this. Cars all the way up this side road. Indeed. That's new. Um, as we get around the back of the factory here, uh, we see a lot more stuff. Yeah. So your initial th- suspicion, more stuff and more cars, appears quite true. And as we look at the parking lot, well, I guess it's here somewhere. Yeah, there you can see how full this parking lot is. Exactly. What do you What do you think the the colors signify, Brian? Do you think there's any any signification in, uh, to the the different blues and greens? Does that make any sense that they would be for different parts of the path factory? No, I think it's just uh, the the vendor. I think okay. the vendor has a preferred color, and those are different vendors. Um, the suspicions Angler has is that on each one, there's numbers, and those probably correspond more likely to PO numbers or part numbers than necessarily coordinates in the factory. But you can see there are people everywhere in all these shots and a lot of cars. Now, this big section with no cars is roped off. So there can't be cars there, but all the way around the factory, pretty full. Hmm. So that means there's a lot more activity in the factory. If you've got more people, you've probably got more activity. And you've got a whole bunch of torn apart uh, crates. So, and this shot, Zangler managed to capture. Look at that. You can see down into the hole. Look at that. So. What we believe is there will be an additional stamping machine placed inside this area. Yeah. That's pretty good. In answer to the question, what will the stamped parts be? We had some responses in the comments last week. We'll get to those. Comments are strongly encouraged this week. We will not make them mandatory because I'm in a good mood. (laughs) I'm your benevolent host. (laughs) Don't make me regret it. Don't abuse it. it. (laughs) Um, I had said that the, uh, cabin, the cab of the truck was carbon fiber. That was wrong. They have been, uh, fiberglass so far. And Zangler is of the belief that they will be stamped steel instead, hmm. which 
maybe they will. And it is now known, uh, Jason Priestley said uh, that these will be, these semis will be made with 4680s, even though the ones sold to date uh, have not, as far as we're aware. As we get around here, the gantry crane parts are still there. They have not been shipped back out. Something you would expect the vendor to do if it is done, suggesting they're going to still need some heavy lift around the factory. And again, everywhere you look, just so much stuff. Parts bins, most likely. Um, what about the circles? What do you think those are? Well, that's a empty spindle is what I'm thinking that is, but there are other circles. You yeah, those. those ones. Boy. Ah, uh, in the comments, what do you guys think these big, heavy could spindles that, Could that be are? possibly like rolled uh, steel? No. Aluminum? No, no, it, no. No. So let's see here. Over here, though, uh, we believe these may be tires. Yeah, it looks like tires, yeah. Uh, or, you know, uh, barrels in which to shoot fish. Uh, of course, there, if they are tires, 79 Dotson comes to mind. I don't know why, but. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I think there's one more thing I had on my notes. Yes, out here we can see the paint equipment uh, for ventilating the paint area. These are the smokestacks, the yeah. exhaust shafts. Just laying hazard in the parking lot there getting ready to be loaded in yeah yeah as one does yes now i have liked this video i encourage you folks to go over to zangler's channel he's already had ten thousand subscribers good job keep it up uh you guys are uh free to subscribe i don't think he'll charge you and if he does come talk to me <laughs> which means it is time to address last week's questions here we go This is what we do, you guys. Free to like this video and that video. Video liking, not a crime that I'm aware of. Bot here, resubscribe, boop, bop, beep, I guess. So there, oh, the <laughs> YouTube went through and unsubscribed for me. 291 people in one day, 294, I forget. That was my net subscribers for one day. I like. I looked, wasn't on a particular video. It just, you know, happened. So that's cool. Yeah. So if you're watching the video now, make sure you're still subscribed. So would uh, you? Would you? I got into a discussion with Grok about that what they will be stamping with the huge press, and he figures that the number one use will be frame rails, even if in sections. It is true that 10 millimeters was too thick to stamp 10 years ago, but along came Tesla. Makes sense. Got to get that question mark in there. As I understand, there's a specialized type of equipment that would stamp something that heavy. I don't believe that that's what's in, but that doesn't mean it can't be done. I mean, they obviously form them somehow. So, and, and they could they could have that type of equipment there as well, right? It could be yeah. the traditional aluminum stamping uh, or steel stamping, and there could be stuff for frames. Absolutely, and Tesla has a habit of doing things that others can't always figure out. So. Maybe so. Can you discover what Tesla is doing to build out the megacharger capabilities for the semi as they ramp production? Uh, we've been through this before, but what do you uh, what do you want to say about that? Well, Tesla, uh, Mr. Priestley had uh, outlined about 27 locations that they were putting together uh, for uh, public use, and they were on a lot of the uh, major thoroughfares between California and Texas. Uh, even branching out into the Midwest and the Northeast. So there are a number of different uh, of sites that have been identified, uh, but there's only a couple that are under construction, uh, just two, I believe. So uh, yes, it's coming, but I don't think Tesla's in a great hurry to roll these out. I think I think they've identified where they want them. And I think obviously at this point, Tesla has the clout to uh, go to anyone that's a property owner and indicate, hey, how would you like a lot of traffic coming your way? And uh, a, a lot of people will jump on that. So I don't think it's going to be a problem of placing them. I, I think the issue is that uh, Tesla's just going to keep things close to their chest. 
uh, just before the rollout. So I'm looking for a lot of activity next year. I'm with you on all of that. It is, uh, they're going to start with the hub and spoke customers, the people who have short uh, back home each day kind of routes. That's going to cover a lot of people. These mega chargers will be manufactured I imagine in prefab manner, just like they do with the uh, chargers for the vehicles. They still use the same V4 cabinet that is used at new uh, vehicle chargers. They're just, it'll go, they'll go up very quick. The trickier part is what they're doing today, I imagine, is identifying locations that have or can get enough juice in time for it to work. But with 500 miles of range, actual range they're going to have <laughs> you don't even need them in every state right you, you want them in every state but you won't need them i believe the semi factory is going to be where they build roboven i think that's early yeah yeah, yeah it's a possibility yes it's a possibility but man that's that's really a long Getting way ahead. away i believe now, th this question was written before the shareholder meeting, but Mark and I have been telling you for six months at least that Boven is not on the roadmap yet. And Elon confirmed at the shareholder meeting, he said, maybe in two years we can start working on it, uh, which for anyone familiar with Tesla timelines is forever. That is a long time from now. Um, so could it be here? Maybe, maybe we, we, there's just no way of knowing. I keep looking at this video and thinking six months to start of ramp. They have a lot of work to do. Hopefully you guys think I am wrong. There's a channel favorite, a buddy of mine who I've gotten a chance to meet. Do you think this factory will be ready in six months? I think the factory will be ready in six months. I, I think that I think that the factory is probably one quarter away from being ready to start moving in the direction of the ramp. So I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing units roll off the uh, production line in February. Uh, so we'll we'll have to see as how fast they ramp because again, this is all new procedure for them. These are new employees. These are these are new lines. This is a new vehicle. So the ramp will happen. But um, I, I'm still looking for that to start quarter one of next year. I am as well. Uh, all of the things they're working on right now, and there's a lot of things they're working on right now, can be worked on in parallel rather than in series. You'll notice that the electrical is going in at the same time as the HVAC, at the same time as the paint shop. As the, I mean, it's all going in at once. So in my mind, the slowest of those is the limiting factor not the and and not that these sentences are to be served concurrently uh but consecutively rather than you get the idea hey any talks of adding a tesla based box truck or a tesla rv we've we've no. fielded this a few <laughs> times <laughs> yeah so so uh nothing at this point no no we know that the market right now is the demand is quasi infinite for the semi let's get that out first as demand begins to sag, you can add more models to increase volume from there. Uh, and the RV, RV market is just not big enough uh, to worry about it. It's just not big enough. Um, I want a steering wheel on my instruction manual for my Model 3. Can you make that happen? Um, we have the technology, but I'm going to tell you, it's not going to drive the same. <laughs> For those who don't know, there was a big dust up among Tesla. I mean, I can't even say Tesla analysts. There were a couple of influencers who were who were 10,000% sure there would be a human drivable cyber cab and took Robin Denholm's offhand comment that, well, if regulators require a wheel, we'll put a wheel in as evidence that there would be a human driven variant of the cyber cab, which there will not. And then uh, those influencers did their little victory lap. Well, one even wrote to me and said, apologize. And I did. I said, I'm sorry, you can't read. <laughs> but, uh, but then, of course, 
one day later, two days later, Elon was on a podcast and confirmed, no, that's not coming. And then he was on a second podcast where he reiterated it in more concise language. It's not happening. And uh, I guess I should say apologize, but I'm afraid he might come up with a clever joke and I just don't need that door open. <laughs> Still no clue as to pricing. So stamping body in aluminum might make sense, but unlikely to be less expensive than fiberglass. There are a lot of internal parts that could be stamped, like the floor pan, dash assembly, etc. Floor pan, yes. Uh, dash assembly, yes. But you don't need a machine the size of what they've got in there. And here it is. Uh, update. Zangler said the entire cab body is stamped steel with just the fairing being fiberglass. If they manage to, if the switch to 4680 is dropping enough weight, go yeah. for it. Exactly. Like, like the, they have all the, the data at their fingertips. So, so they know the weight uh, to battery ratio. They know what kind of efficiency they're going to get. They know where they'll gain, where they'll lose. And you know what? Then it comes down to economics. Does it make more sense to do steel uh, as opposed to aluminum, as opposed to fiberglass, as opposed to carbon fiber? Uh, it just, it's, it's, it's a lot of moving parts, but once you have them, you can put them all in a matrix and figure out what works best for you. There is no spoon. Is that what you mean by the matrix? I think that's right. Okay. Is the ramp for the product launch RA. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mwah. Mwah. Good one. Wonderful. Why, why can't Tesla move faster? And do you think they should do advertising finally move faster? Um, I mean, they rely on contractors and established procedures, and they operate at the forefront of the timeframes available from those contractors, is what I would say. That's what I'd say. I, I'd say for the answer to the question, they can't move much faster if they can. So mm -hmm. no, they can't go beyond really what they're doing. Uh, in fact, they're, they're at the forefront typically of building factories speed-wise and uh, putting lines in effect and building new units like really you look at the other automotive uh makers manufacturers out there they don't even come close to the the timelines that tesla seems to be able to hit consistently with new factories lines and vehicles all correct uh i would agree with every part of that the reality is you can build faster but the costs get outrageous anything you want done in a rush the cost becomes prohibitive uh at the end of the day, they still need to make a profit on what they're doing. And you could look at their massive mound of cash and say, well, who cares? Just spend it. Shareholders. That's yeah. what <laughs> There's people that are watching. Definitely. Yes. And what good is it to have the building done more quickly if the 4680 isn't ready to ramp into it? There's reasons why it is okay to delay. So guys, uh, that's enough for today. I figure 19 minutes should do the trick. What did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Hey, head over to the Tesla life. Find out what Mark Patrick and Casey are up to. They have quite a bit of fun. Maybe not as much fun as me and Mark, but we won't tell them. And uh, I think only Casey would make it this far in a video to know. And if that's the case, I apologize, Casey. Uh, and if you don't find out, then I definitely do not apologize. <laughs> Everybody else, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots when you've subscribed. Yeah.